Hello everyone. In today's lecture, I will be discussing the topic metamorphosis in insects. But before I delve more into the topic, I would like to mention that this presentation is a part of the initiative of the Zoological Society of Assam to connect to the students who are pursuing their graduation in zoology as well as in life sciences. Coming to the learning framework, what are we going to learn from this particular presentation? So mainly, I am considering the four points. Number one, the definition of insect metamorphosis, the different types of metamorphosis, hormonal control of insect metamorphosis, and genes and metamorphosis. What is metamorphosis? I'm sure you are familiar with the word. The word metamorphosis comes from the Greek word which means to transform. Thus, insect metamorphosis is a biological process of transformation or abrupt changes in the animal's body structure through cell growth and differentiation. Metamorphosis can also be defined as the change in form as they grow from an embryo to an adult. So, metamorphosis is a post-embryonic development and primarily involves the destruction of the larval tissue and their replacement by an entirely different population of cells. Coming to the type of metamorphosis, metamorphosis are generally of four different types. Number one, ametabolous, that is little or no metamorphosis. Number two, hemimetabolous or incomplete metamorphosis, power metabolic or gradual metamorphosis, and number four, holometabolic or complete metamorphosis. Let us see what is ametabolic metamorphosis. That means there is no true metamorphosis. So the most primitive insects such as springtail, silverfish, firebrats, they undergo little or no true metamorphosis over the entire course of their life cycle. So entomologists refer to these insects as emitabilis or having no metamorphosis. So when they emerge from the egg, immature uh, insects look like tiny versions of their adult counterparts. They continue molting and growing until they reach sexual maturity. Let us see hemimetabolous or incomplete metamorphosis. This metamorphosis is marked by three life stages, the egg, the nymph and the adult. Growth for hemimetabolous insects occur during the nymph stage. These nymphs resemble the adult in most ways, particularly in appearance and exhibit similar behaviors. We can see incomplete metamorphosis in dragonflies, mayflies, stoneflies, etc. Now, the power metabolis or gradual metamorphosis. In this metamorphosis, the newly hatched young ones resemble the adult in general body form but lack wing and external genital appendages. The young nymphs undergo several nymphal stages through successive molting to transform into an adult. Gradual metamorphosis can be seen in grasshopper, cross crutches, etc. Complete or holometabolous metamorphosis. In this metamorphosis, each stage of the life cycle is divided into four different stages, the egg stage, the larva stage, the pupa stage and the adult stage. And it is markedly distinct by a different appearance. The larvae of holometabolous insects bears no resemblance to their adult counterparts. That is, they look totally different. Their habitat and food sources also may be entirely different from the adult as well. We can see complete metamorphosis in butterflies, beetles, fleas, etc. In insects, Growth and metamorphosis are controlled by hormones that are synthesized by the endocrine glands near the front of the body. In this picture, we can see certain glands and their secretions. The glands are the neurosecretory cells, the prothoracic glands, corpora alata, corpora cardiaca, midgut endocrine cells, 
and epitracheal cells. All these glands have their secretion and all play a very important role in the metamorphosis of insects. Among all the hormones necessary for insect metamorphosis, one of the major hormones is the prothoracicotropic hormone, abbreviated as CTTH. It was the first insect hormone to be discovered and was originally described as brain hormone by Stephen Kopek and Vincent Wigglesworth. PTTH is necessary during molting and pupation. Prothoracicotropic hormone is a homodimer of two polypeptides of 109 amino acids. This hormone does not drive pupation directly, but as its name suggests, act on the prothoracic gland. Now let us see the steroid hormone ectisome. Under the influence of prothoracicotropic hormone, prothoracic glands secrete the steroid hormone ectisome. Now ectisome triggers every mode that is from larva to larva as well as from pupa to adult. Let's see the juvenile hormone. The prothoracicotropic hormone stimulates the corpora alata to secrete the juvenile hormone. As long as there is enough juvenile hormone, ecdyson promotes larva to larva molds. With lower amounts of juvenile hormone, ecdyson promotes pupation. And when there is complete absence of juvenile hormone, it results in the formation of an adult. In mature insects, juvenile hormone is secreted prior to each molt. Let us see the process by which hormone controls insect metamorphosis. We know when an immature insect grows, it requires a larger exoskeleton. The sensory input from the body as well as certain environmental factors then activates the neurosecretory cells in the brain. This neurosecretory cells then activates the corpora cardiaca which releases the prothoracicotropic hormone or PTTH. This PTTH then activates the prothoracic glands which releases the hormone ectisome. Similarly, PTTH also stimulates the corpora, ta, corpora alata to release the juvenile hormone when required. Genes and metamorphosis. We know genes and metamorphosis go hand in hand. So there are two types of genes which play an important part in metamorphosis the regulatory genes and the effector genes. Let us first see what are regulatory genes. Now, the ecdysteroids initiate a cascade of gene activity that involves both early and late genes. Most of these genes code for transcription factors that activate a series of genes for the proteins that build the structures of various stages. Coming to the effector genes, the effector genes are the genes that code for proteins that contribute directly to the form and function of the morphologically distinct metamorphic stages of the holometabolic insect. Moreover, these can be structural proteins such as cuticular proteins or enzymes that participate in physiological activities like digestion, etc. or even enzymes necessary for the formation of pigments found in different stages. So, the, these are the suggested reading and references which I have followed for this particular presentation. I am sure this presentation will help and guide you. And if you have any queries, you can contact me at the email address given. Thank you for your patient hearing.